What does our diet have to do with climate change? So our diet uh, and our agriculture, agriculture is very much connected to what's happening to the climate and climate disruption. Uh, it's a huge piece of the puzzle of all the factors going into climate change. Uh, there's, you know, so many different aspects to it, but uh, what we're learning and what we're finding is that animal agriculture in particular is very impactful on climate change, much more impactful than plant farming. We're seeing that across the board, uh, not only do the animals themselves contribute to climate change just through their rumination, so the cows and other ruminants, um, goats and sheep will, uh, 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 it, it, it's mostly their burping, their, their, their chewing of the cud, it creates methane naturally. But because we have bred them in such huge numbers, uh, this methane is contributing to the climate change, climate disruption. Uh, but beyond just that, there's so many other aspects. So all the excrement that is piled up on the dairy farm, on the uh, chicken farms, that creates nitrous oxide and other greenhouse gases that are absolutely impactful as well uh, on global warming. So all that excrement uh, and just the energy intensive uh, uh, production of animal farming. Animal farming creates so much more energy waste, fossil fuel use than compared to plant farming. There's, you know, the, 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 the mechanized processes of the dairy facility of the slaughterhouse, having to wash down all that equipment and uh, just the mechanization, the refrigeration, the freezing. There's so much more energy in the production of animal products compared to plants. So, we really, you know, if you want to reduce your carbon footprint, you want to help with climate change, with climate disruption, uh, and, and actually environmental uh, organizations are really starting to come on board. They're really starting to see that this is a huge piece of the climate change puzzle and what things that we need to do, and that is to reduce and eliminate animal products and switch to a global plant-based diet. It's going to really, really help. Uh, and the beautiful thing about it is that it we don't we won't need uh, government involvement. We don't need you know policy change. We don't need billions of dollars. All it takes is making a different choice at the grocery store. That's all. That's all. And we can all do that. We can all make a difference. And we can all. Uh, have an, a wonderful, really impactful, um, uh, you know, impact to change uh, and improve climate change and climate disruption. So I hope we make that choice. Please describe the difference in an individual carbon footprint when someone decides to buy organic versus when someone decides to become vegan. Organic, I'll, I'll start by saying that organic, of all the labels we you know, see out there that are supposed to be better for the environment, we see free range, we see, see sustainable, there's you know, labels out there. None of those labels are regulated. None of those labels really mean anything. Organic is really the only one that does have some standards, some uh, 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 impact. And, and it can be a lot of impact, especially with plant farming. Uh, with plant farming, organic is a great thing, reducing our pesticide use and uh, synthetics and all that. Uh, however, when we're talking about animal products, so the only difference with an animal product that is organic is that the feed that is fed to the animals is organic, pesticide free, and the animals are generally drug free as well. It's the only difference. There's so many other impacts and inputs with dairy, with animal products uh, that are not addressed with organic. Um, the, the, the methane that's coming from the cows themselves, the nitrous oxide coming from the piles of excrement, the uh, you know, energy intensiveness of the process, none of that is addressed in organic, the organic label. So 
I'll give an example. You could be at the store and you see uh, there's a tomato that's not organic and maybe not even local, it came from Mexico and you think, oh my goodness, that tomato has got a huge impact. Uh, you know, I, I won't go for that. How about this local dairy product that's organic? Organic local dairy product, that's gotta have less, less uh, impact, right? No, no, not at all because animal products are just so much more intensive in energy wise, uh, impact wise, there's so many more um, uh, uh, factors that go into a dairy product and that make it more impactful environmentally. Uh, so unfortunately, um, you know, just because something is organic is not necessarily mean that it's better for the environment, for the animals, for your health, for anything. Uh, so the best thing to do is to reduce and eliminate animal products altogether and eat organic plants, organic plant food. Please explain how a dairy cow is grown from the beginning to their death. So a dairy cow's life is very sad and very miserable from the very beginning because she, uh, he or she is going to be dragged away from their mother at birth uh, and she will never know the love and security of a mother. She will always be scared and mourning for her mother. Uh, it's a horrible way to start life. If she's a little, if she's a little girl, she will be uh, taken to the other side of the dairy farm or far away from her mother and uh, put in a, in a calf hutch. They're kind of like a, a, it looks like a, a white plastic dog house. Uh, she'll be chained there or pinned there. Uh, separated from other cows, from her mother, from anyone uh, in all, all weather, whether it be freezing, whether it be hot, doesn't matter, all um, uh, uh, conditions of weather. And she will be uh, fed a soy formula or a, a non-milk formula, <laughs> believe it or not, they don't even get milk. Sometimes there is some um, uh, low quality milk that's mixed in, but uh, she'll get a formula that, um, you know, that, that is, is not the natural where she should be drinking her mother's milk, her mother's, from her mother's udder. She will never experience that. Uh, and she will be raised that way until she is old enough for her first artificial insemination. These cows are kept pregnant because of course, when they are pregnant is the only time that they are lactating and give, when they give birth, then they will give milk. Uh, and so artificial insemination is a, a horrible process. It's, you know, that none of these animals breed naturally anymore. Hardly any of the, the species breed naturally and certainly not cows. Uh, for artificial insemination, uh, there are steers, bulls, and other areas that are masturbated for their sperm. Uh, and then the sperm is put into a sperm gun. Uh, that's what it's, the, the device is called, a very long metal device that is inserted into her vagina. And then um, the cow, uh, the uh, farmer will actually insert his arm into the cow's rectum to manipulate her inside as they uh, insert the, uh, the, the sperm so that there's more chance of her being pre impregnated. It's just really such a violation and such a brutal process. And I, I encourage anyone that wants to you know, learn about it to uh, go to YouTube and, and watch a video of artificial insemination. It's really um, a, a horrible process. And so she is pregnant, the, you know, the, the, the conditions are terrible, there's confinement, there is misery, there is um, you know, very little uh, natural um, life that she's experiencing hardly ever in the outside. And as soon as she gives birth, that baby's taken away just like she was. Uh, and she does not get to experience have, being a mother, having the, the, that, that um, protective uh, loving exchange with her offspring, it's horrible. Uh, and then she will be milked numerous times a day. They give way more milk than they would naturally. They have been manipulated, genetically manipulated to give so much more milk than what would be natural. And, it's, you know, it's a brutal, horrible process that she will have to endure for 
a few years, uh, but it will still be a fraction of her lifespan. Cows can live to be 20, 20, 25 years old. Uh, she will go to slaughter before her fifth birthday. She, dairy cows rarely see their third or fourth or fifth birthday. Uh, so it's a really horrible, horrible system that we support with every yogurt, with every uh, you know, uh, cream cheese, with every cottage cheese, and all of these dairy products can be found uh, non-dairy now from plant sources. There's so much wonderful non-dairy milks. If you don't like one, try another. There's, you know, there's almond milk and oat milk and uh, hemp milk and just anything you can think of, coconut milk. It's truly amazing the options that are out there. Uh, so I really encourage everyone to try non-dairy milks, non-dairy yogurts. Uh, and please don't support the horrible, torturous dairy industry.